So we're going to talk about migrate permissions. This is going to be a very generic overview of three scenarios specifically. Migrating permissions from a file share to a SharePoint site. The second scenario is SharePoint to SharePoint to a classic SharePoint destination, whether that's an on-prem or the classic site on SharePoint online environment. And then the third scenario is going to be migrating from a SharePoint site to a SharePoint site that is modern and has an M365 group. So let's go with the first one. So file share to SharePoint and just for you know the purposes we'll set to a classic SharePoint meaning that we're only dealing with SharePoint groups we're not dealing with any M365 groups the M365 group is going to come at the end and it kind of applies to all previous cases as well but for intents and purposes just for the explanation we don't have an M365 group at this time What's important to know about a file share migration is I would say less about the destination and more about the source because a standard NTFS file share permission system works very differently than a SharePoint. There's a couple of things you can do in NTFS that you can't do and vice versa. So it's important to understand the difference. And mainly the most important thing to remember is that what the share get migration tool looks at first and foremost, it will look at the status if you will, in the sense of, is it inherited or is it broken inheritance? The reason this is important is, is because if the file, the folder, the directory, whatever, if the permission itself on the object is inherited, that's the only thing that the ShareGate migration tool looks at. If it's inherited, it only migrates as inherited, which, you know, Really what it means is that we migrate the content, the folders, the files, we bring it over to the destination, we put an inherited status on it. So it will inherit from its new parent, whatever that might be. So obviously, yes, if you have already set up your environment and your permissions at the top, you know, at the site collection level, to trickle down through inherited through your libraries and your folders, and you set it up the same way that you set up in your file share, then yeah, you, you could have a one-to-one -one scenario, no problem. But if the parent is different, or if the membership of the parent is different at the destination, you're not going to get a one-to-one -one copy of the permissions because the only thing that's being migrated in this instance is inherited permission. If it has disabled inheritance, then yes, we will look at every single permission on here and we'll try to match it at the destination. What's important to remember, and this is the big thing that I think catches a lot of people off guard, is on NTFS file share system, it is very much possible to have enabled inheritance, so it's still inheriting from its parent, but to also have a unique permission on the folder or the item. But that's not possible in SharePoint. SharePoint either has broken inheritance or it has enabled inheritance. There's no in between. So in cases like this, we're going to treat it as broken inheritance, which means we will look at all the permissions. We will recreate them as much as we can at the destination, given that everything's available and mapped user to user. But we will break inheritance on the object at the destination. If that's something you don't want, you can simply, under the options, uncheck custom permissions. We just take all the content, we migrate as inherited. Anytime in the share get migration tool that you see a permissions option that you can uncheck. We are always talking about unique, explicit, or custom permissions. There's no scenario where you can migrate an item and just get rid of all its permissions. You can't have a file or a folder in SharePoint that doesn't have any permissions. So either they're inherited or if you have the option on, they're unique in that particular case. Okay, let's move on to second scenario where we're talking about SharePoint to SharePoint, basically just SharePoint groups. So we're talking about classic SharePoint sites. So whether it's on-prem or a classic site in a SharePoint online environment. How it works, we don't have access to Active Directory. So what we do is we actually use SharePoint's People Picker service. People Picker query will check to see if this user is in your Active Directory and, more importantly, if they're active. If uh, a user is disabled or is blocked, chances are they won't show up in a People Picker service. And that has implications for migrating permissions. We will look at the source, we'll see, okay, which users have permissions where, whether it's uh, populating membership in a SharePoint group, or whether it's assigning unique or explicit permissions on a folder, an item, a file. We do a people picker query at the destination to find a user. If you find the user, if it resolves in people picker service, then we say, okay, well, we have user A here. Given the information that we have, we did a people picker query at the destination with that same information. We found a match, it resolved awesome. 
So we're grabbing this permissions here and we're sending it over to uh, this one. So we'll recreate the permissions or membership of SharePoint groups or anything along those lines. We really use the source information that we have. We don't know what the destination looks like yet. So let's say that you acquire a new company and you are looking to grab all of their SharePoint environment, bring it onto your SharePoint environment. If you're going from on-premise to online. These are scenarios where the user at the destination wouldn't necessarily match the user at the source. So those are situations you would want to do the user in group mapping. If you're migrating from a classic SharePoint site, this is the third scenario, to a modern SharePoint site with M365 group, so like a group zero template, it'll work a little bit differently for some of the default groups specifically. What I mean by that is for the owners and the members default group, we will do the same people pick your query service. We will uh, find the users, but we won't populate the permissions in the default group specifically because it has an M365 group. And normally if you have an M365 group, that's how you are managing your site for the owners and the members. So what we'll do instead is we'll populate those users in the M365 group specifically. So they won't show, if you go to actual, you know, your advanced permissions, you go on your SharePoint site, you look at the, the members of your SharePoint group, they won't be there. They won't be there specifically named in the SharePoint group. They'll be on the M365 group. And then normally how an M365 group works, it populates membership for owners and members in the associated default SharePoint group as an AD security group. So you can see it is a group zero. It does have an M365 group. We have uh, our user here that's owner. We have another owner here. We have a guest owner and owner. If I go look at site permissions, I see here that I don't have the same people in site owners and site members. If I go in advanced permission, let's say I go look at the members group. All I have is the actual name of the site here, which is an AD security group, which refers to the members of the M365 group specifically. It's essentially the same for the owners group, except notice I have nothing here. I have no owners, but we just saw that I have a couple of owners in the M365 group for whatever reason in the owners in the default owners group, the AD security group that refers to the owners of the M365 group tends to be hidden. Why does Microsoft put a hidden AD security group? Ah. I don't know, but that's how it works. So even if it's not there, as long as the M365 group is associated with the site collection, its members are part of the members default group and its owners are part of the owners default group. That's just how it works. Doesn't matter if you don't see it in the actual default SharePoint group.